Hello, it's Miss Beatty here and today we are continuing to find a percentage of an amount. This lesson is a follow on from yesterday's lesson and we are still looking at calculating a percentage of an amount and we're still using our division skills to find percentages, but we are also going to be working on using 20%, okay, finding 20% of a number or a shape and finding 75% of a number and a shape. We're still going to look at 10% as well because I think some of us were struggling a little bit with it yesterday. So I just want to make sure the understanding is there. And the reason we are looking at these three percentages is again, because they are the most common ones that will come up in everyday life. Just remember that percentages are always out of 100%. So we're working with our hundreds, okay? So remember, to find 10% of a number, you just need to divide by 10. As a decimal, 10% is 0 0.1. As a fraction, is 10 out of 100, so it's equal to 10%, because 10 tens, 10 times 10 is equal to 100. So when we're asked to find 10% of a number, we are just dividing by 10. If a number like this one here, 60, has a zero on the end of it, if you're dividing by 10, all you need to do is take the zero off. So 10% of 60 becomes six pounds, okay? Six pounds. 10% 10 of 950 kilometers. There's a zero on the end of it, so I know that 10% of 950 kilometers becomes 95 kilometers because I've just taken the zero off the end, okay? If I'm working with a number that does not have a zero on the end of it, um, and I want to find 10% of it, I just need to move my decimal point back one space to the left. So 99, if I was to do that, 99 divided by 10, if I move my decimal point one space to the left and put it here in the middle, 10% of 99 centimeters, becomes 9.9 .9 centimeters. So when a number does not have the zero in it, you just have to move this imaginary decimal point back one space to the left, and that's how you find your answer. So 99 becomes 9.9. .9. That's probably the most difficult type of question that you could be asked when it comes to finding 10% of a number. To find 20% of a number, you just need to divide by five, okay? So we're using our five times table. 20% as a decimal looks like 0 0.2 or 0 0.20, but you don't need to put the zero in because it's just a placeholder. So 0 0.2 is fine. As a fraction, it is 20 over 100, so that is equal to 20%, which is equal to a fifth because 20, add 20, add 20, add 20, add 20 is equal to 100. And there's five of these, one, two, three, four, five. So five twenties go into 100. Five times 20 is 100. So that is why 20% is also known as one fifth. And that is why you divide a number by five if you are finding 20% of something. Okay. So for example, if I wanted to find, um, let me say 20%, okay, we'll just write it here. If I wanted to find 20% of, let's say 15, all I'm asking myself is what is 15 divided by five? What is 15 divided by five or how many fives go into 15? And I know that five times three is 15, so 20% of 15 or 15 divided by five, the answer is three, okay? If I did 20% of 10, I'm asking myself, what is 10 divided by five or how many fives go into 10? The answer would be two, okay? That's how you find 20% of a number. To find 75% of a number, now this is where it gets a little bit trickier, but it's still good to know this. To find 75% of a number, you just need to find three quarters of the number. Now, we looked at fractions where we have a mixed numerator 
and denominator. So I'll show you how to figure that out step by step. Now, 75% as a decimal looks like 0 0.75. As a fraction, it is 75 out of 100 and is equal to 75%. But in its smallest form or its simplest form, 75 out of 100 is also equal to three quarters, okay? Because we know a quarter, one quarter is equal to 25%, which we should know from yesterday's lesson. A quarter is equal to 25%. And if I did 25 times three, or if I did a quarter times three, the answer would be 75. So if I did 25, add 25, add 25, my answer would get 75. And that is why three quarters is also known as 75%. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to work out three quarters of a number or 75% of a number. So to find 75% of a number, remember three quarters. What is 75% of 8 centimetres. So what is 3 quarters of 8? Remember, when you're working with a mixed fraction, you need to divide this number here, the number we're working with, divide this number by the number on the bottom of the fraction, then multiply that answer by the top number of the fraction. So to find 75% of 8, we need to do 8 divided by 4. So how many 4s go into 8? The answer is 2. So that's the first step. And now I need to multiply my 2 by the 3. So 2 times 3 is equal to 6. So my complete answer is 75% of 8 centimetres is 6 centimetres. That is my final answer because I've shown my working. I've multiplied, sorry, I've divided by the 4, the number on the bottom, and I've multiplied my answer by the number on the top of the fraction, which was timesing it by 3. Let's try this one here. So sometimes it might help if you write the fraction below it so that you know that what you're working with. 75% of £16. Pounds. What is 3 quarters of £16? Pounds? Right, so first step, I need to divide by my number on the bottom. So 16 divided by 4. How many 4s go into 16? So I know that 4 times 4 is 16, so my answer is 4. Now I need to use this answer here and multiply it, okay, multiply it by the 3 because that's our number on the top. So what is 4 times 3 or 3 times 4? And I know that that answer is 12 from using my times tables. So the final answer is 12 pounds. Remember to always write that in if that's what you're working with. So 75% of 16 pounds is 12 pounds. What about 75% of 8 to 8? So if we're getting a little bit into sort of two like bigger numbers, closer to the three digit mark, 75% of 8 to 8. Again, I'm just going to do three quarters of it. So I need to divide 8 to 8, okay, by 4. And I know that 4 goes into 8 twice. And it goes into 8 twice. So the answer is 22. Then I need to do 22 multiplied by 3. Now, if I can't do that in my head, I could just set it out like a column, column sum or a chimney sum. 22 times 3, 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 2 is 6. OK, and you can do that for the division part as well. You could use the bus stop method of division for the bottom number and then multiply the answer by 3 using this type of strategy. But you can do it in your head if you think you're confident with that. So 75% of 88 is 66. What about 75% of 476 metres? Now this is where it gets trickier. We're working with three digit numbers now. So I would recommend using your bus stop method of division first and then your column method of multiplication to find the complete answer. So 75% of 476. Right, let's divide by four first. OK, so let's do show my working here. Put 476 metres okay, into my bus stop division and put four on the outside because we're using four to divide this number by. How many fours go into four? 
I know that one, one four, so four times one is four, so my answer is one. Now, does four go into seven? No, but it goes into four, okay, goes into four once. How many spaces is it to get from four to seven? That will be my remainder. So I know that that's three spaces. So I put my remainder here and this becomes 36. How many fours go into 36? Well, if I do my four times table, I know that nine fours go into 36. So 476 meters divided by four is equal to 119 meters. But that's not the complete answer because I then need to multiply 119 by three because that's our number on the top of three quarters. So I'll set that out like a little chimney sum if I've got space. If you can see, it might be a wee bit tricky to see. Nine times three, I know is 27. So I write my seven down here, carry over the one, sorry, the two. Three times one is three, add the two is five okay and three times one is three and there's nothing more to carry over so my answer is 357 so that is my complete answer so 75 percent of 476 meters is 357 meters so that's where it gets super tricky but i wanted to show you that just in case you fancy challenging yourself and just so that you know about it okay before we end this video i just want to quickly show you a couple of problem solving questions that might come up again they're very similar to what we did yesterday apart from we're working with 20 percent and 75 percent so if bob saved up 200 pounds he spent 10 percent of this money on a new sofa how much money did he spend on the sofa so all this question is asking you is to find 10% of 200, okay? And I know that 200 pounds divided by 10 is, on, is just going to be 20, because remember, if the number has got a zero in it, you can just knock one of the zeros off. So the answer would be 20 pounds. So Bob spends 20 pounds on a new sofa, okay? Louise saved up £550. She spent 20% of this money on a new phone. How much money did she spend on the phone? So it's just asking you, what is 20% of 550? We know that 20%, okay, 20% is equal to a fifth, remember. So we're dividing 550 by 5. And I can set that out like this as a bust stop method of division if it helps. Okay, 550 divided by 5. How many times does 5 go into 5? Once. How many times does 5 go into this 5? Once. Does 5 go into 0? No, it doesn't. So we just put 0 on the top. So I know that Louise spent £110 on a new phone. Last problem solving question. Mark held a car boot sale and he made £436. He donated 75%. So remember, that's three quarters. He donated three quarters of this money to charity. How much money did he donate? So that's very kind of Mark to do that. But we want to figure out exactly how much money he did donate from the £436. So we need to find three quarters of that amount. So first of all, remember, we need to divide by the number on the bottom. So we put 436 in our bust stop method of division. And we put four on the outside because that's the number we're dividing this number by. How many times does four go into four? The answer is one. Does four go into three? No, it doesn't. And it only goes into zero below three. So we have to put a zero up here. And from zero to get to three is three spaces. So we know the remainder is going to be three that we put on top of the six so this number becomes 36 how many fours go into 36 the answer would be nine if you did your four times table so he's got 109 so far but we need to multiply that by our three so if i did another sum let's do a little chimney sum 109 times three i'll get my answer okay 
3 times 9 I know is 27, so I've got 7 here and I carry over the 2. 3 times 0 is 0, add the 2 is 2, and 3 times 1 is 3. So I know that Mark donated 327 pounds to charity out of the 436 pounds. So that's how you work at a problem solving question like that. I don't mind if you use a calculator to work out these answers. It's up to you. I just wanted to show you how to do it this way, how to use your head or to use your brain to figure out the answer this way. But you can use a calculator for these types of things. OK, so have a go. It might be a little bit tricky and it is a follow on from yesterday's lesson. But I just want to consolidate that understanding from yesterday. So have a go. Ask for help if you need it and let, show us your work as well once you've completed it.